Yash is asking, what does a sports analyst day look like? What kind of work do you do? And then his follow-up question was, what kind of projects should I work on if I wanted to break into sports analytics? Could you give some examples? Yeah, so I should probably explain what sports analytics is to begin with. Oh, did we so, not do that? Let's do that. <laughs> so uh, my the type of work that I do in sports analytics is only one of the three main branches. So the branch that I'm in is you know team performance, team optimization, helping players and the coaches make better decisions. Okay. Related to that is within the organization, helping the organization maximize money. So that's like optimizing ticket prices or mm -hmm. Um, you know, looking at fan traffic or what restaurants they should have in the stadiums, whatever that might be. So mm -hmm. there's one branch. The other branch is on the media and news and commercial side. And that's more of a storytelling aspect. You want people to be really engaged with the broadcast, with the journalism associated with it. So you start using uh, data science, data analytics to tell a story. So if you're watching a football game, they'll say, you know how many sacks a player has or um, you know you, know, you have normal passing yards uh, rushing yards whatever that might be i'm but understanding all, all of this by the way ken i'm totally <laughs> following all the sports lingo you're you're doing great keep going <laughs> uh, but so you know they're starting to inter introduce a lot more advanced stats too that help play that help someone sitting on their couch understand and appreciate the game a little bit more and then the last main branch of sports analytics is in the gambling space. We're trying to predict outcomes. And that's mm -hmm. also becoming more and more popular with sports gambling being legalized uh, federally across the US. So I think that that's going to be a big area of growth. So if you're thinking about projects and trying to get into, uh, into the field, I would focus on one of those three types of things based on what sector you're interested in getting involved in. Honestly, a lot of them are complementary. If you worked on a project associated with, uh, you know, visualizations and understanding the game and telling a good story, that would help you in, you know, either of the other two branches of team performance or, or, or the gambling side. But mm -hmm. that would be how I would go about framing the projects that are out there. And from there, I would just focus on things that that you find interesting, right? People are going to be so much more involved in their own projects that they're doing if they're really passionate about it. For me, it was always golf. Uh, I played a lot of daily fantasy sports, and I was trying to predict the golf tournament outcomes. That was my holy grail for quite some time. How now, did you? Were you good at it? Or did you have, like? I, I, I was net positive, but by the time that I was really diving into it, I wasn't really allowed to do it anymore. Uh -huh. So with some of the contracts we have uh, and the data that we have access to, it's kind of a gray area around if mm. it, it's, it's, it's legal. But stock when you're at a corporation. I, highly, highly frowned upon. Uh, so yeah. I, I figured that I'll probably make more money as a data scientist than I do as a sports gambler anyway, so. <laughs> but yeah, that's, um, speaking of data, right, there's a question here about, can you share some of the sources for data sets related to sports? Like where would people go to look yes. for data? So Kaggle also has great data. I have a website that I have not really been active on. Uh, it's called playingnumbers.com. Okay. And uh, I have a tab where I just went on Kaggle basically and took all of the sports data sets and just linked them there. So you, you could uh, have more organization and be simpler to use. Mm -hmm. There's also a couple APIs. So one of the more common ones is for R and it's called NFL Scrape R. Um, and that, that one's very well documented, very well used. Yeah. Um, golf is hard. Uh, uh, basketball, there are some APIs as well, but they're a little shaky. Uh, but you can get stuff off basketball reference. You can scrape that site relatively easy. Uh, football reference, baseball reference. Uh, that's generally what I recommend. Yeah, I think people can also maybe try Google Dataset Search. I'm actually mm -hmm. talking to the founder of Google Dataset Search um, October 13th. So that's going to be an interesting discussion, but I can't go without plugging that, right? It's uh, such a relevant I'll be sure topic. to tune in. Uh, what about cricket? So Adrian says sports analytics has transformed cricket. We almost get as many stats as you might get per baseball game. So in the US, we don't play much cricket, so I don't have much exposure to it. But I would love if there is a cricket analytics expert or someone who is pretty well versed in it to come on to, to my channel and do a talk because, uh, you, you know, my biggest thing is if I don't know something, I'm going to try and find someone who does. 
Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna claim to, to know it all. So I, I would love to have someone talk about that uh, and, and first me on that because I mean, I'm obviously interested in how this is applied in across all different sports, whether that's cricket, whether that's like UFC fighting or boxing, uh, golf, basketball, baseball, even swimming. I don't know. What about running? I actually, I spent last year analyzing a lot of my running data. That was a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have, uh, I forget what the guy's name is, who, who broke the uh, the marathon record. Yes, and that I, guy. I, I know I, that guy. <laughs> I saw a pretty crazy analysis they did on the shoes. Okay. Uh, the, 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 new, the new Nike shoes you're wearing, they're, they're basically saying that the shoes are cheating. Oh, come uh, on. I want to, uh, whoever said that, put those shoes on and run a marathon. I'd love to see it. I would love to see it. No, I mean, I, I, I'm, I completely agree. I think it's, it's a, a lot more physical than the technology would be, but <laughs> I do think it's interesting that it's like, Hey, we can quantify some of this stuff. How much faster can an equipment change help me to, to perform? You know, if you're talking about cycling, uh, how much does the, the, I don't really know much about cycling, but you know, the, the weight of the bike, I mean, is lighter oh, yeah. really better for building momentum, whatever that might be. So um, there, there's tons of opportunities. There's a lot, a lot of stuff out there that hasn't been explored yet. And it's fun. I mean, these projects are interesting, at least to me. That, that's why I got excited about this, got into this in the first place. Yeah, we've got, we got some help here from Adam. So it was a two hour marathon, Ilyud Kipchog. So. Thank you. Yes. Um, okay, let's see. We've got a question here from Michael. Oh, I think he had a f another question before this because this is a follow on. Okay, so he's late to the party and he apologizes that this was covered. But as someone who has been in the business uh, data analysis for years, what aspects about sports analysis are fundamentally different? And what would you suggest would be a good skills knowledge to gain in preparation for breaking into this industry? So I think the biggest difference is just the subject area. So mm -hmm. sports have a lot of context. There's a, a lot of subject area expertise that you have to understand. Yeah. And that's for better or for worse, really part of the equation. I mean, uh, we probably would have not gotten our work in golf if uh, my team, you know, we're all really good at golf. I played in college. I used to play professionally. It's, it's something that we understand the competitive aspects of the game probably better than any other, um, you know, sports analyst out there just from having played at a, a somewhat high level. I mean, not high level compared to our clients, but yeah. uh, the other thing is that there is a formulaic approach to mm -hmm. uh, sports analytics. There are actual formulas that have been tested that that um, are, I wouldn't set, say set in stone, but they're used fairly frequently. An example would be the Pythagorean theorem of baseball. So basically a function of the runs that a team has scored versus the runs that have been scored against it. So you can pre accurately approximate a, uh, a winning percentage based on those numbers, right? And that's used in a lot of things. Let's say I wanted to see how much, uh, what their win percentage would be next year. I can project how many runs I would expect them to score based on any trades or based on their schedule difficulty and the same thing with the ones scored against them. So there are a couple of formulas you want to learn, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, you know, again, baseball wins above replacement, uh, you know, basketball, we have player PER, we have a win share. Uh, there's a bunch of these just approaches that people have used. Uh, and so my best recommendation for getting at least some familiarity with those is a book called Mathletics. That's one of my favorite intro to sports analytics books. And they it's in Excel. So I've been trying to talk to the author and see if he'll let me kind of do it all over in, in Python and we can collaborate, but work in progress. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but that is a really great foundation applied with the data science knowledge. And if you're reading blogs, you're looking at some of these other websites that are doing this analysis, um, like nylon calculus is a good one for basketball. Mm. Uh, that to me is how you develop that, that subject area expertise. That's so important there. Awesome. And I see, um, Steven has put in a lot of effort getting every type of, um, sports emoji in here. So, Nice. I just had to show it up on screen. There are a yeah. lot of different sports emojis. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Stephen. So yeah, there's, there's no golf ball, though. What the heck? Oh, no, you didn't see the golf. Hold on. Yeah, that's why you were getting so close to it. I think hockey. the first one is golf, no? That's, that's is that field hockey. OK, OK. Yeah. It's OK. It's OK. It's OK. All right, Stephen, come on. We need a golf ball. But anyways, um, a follow-on question from Michael that I really liked was, 
what would you suggest is the best route for getting an opportunity? Networking, 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 or are there clear alternative routes that have been shown to be successful? I know we covered this uh, a bit already, but maybe do a little refresher. Of how do people actually get a job? Yeah, so the most effective way, in my opinion, is networking combined with incredible projects or very interesting projects and sharing them. So realistically, in sports, you still have to do a somewhat traditional resume drop. It's harder to meet people in sports organizations because there are less sports organizations than there are just normal companies, right? I mean, there's a limited, a finite number of sports teams in the US. You know, we're talking, let's say on average, 30 teams per league. You know, we're talking we got uh, 150, 200 total companies, which isn't a very big set. And sports organizations don't have surprisingly very large analytics departments even still. So, yeah, right, uh, maybe, yeah. maybe soon. Yeah, and so the amount of people that you could potentially meet in that space are relatively small. Mm -hmm. But you can catch their attention by creating a really cool project, creating a new insight related to the sport and posting it online. Mm -hmm. And if you have a good insight, it's a, there's a very good chance that someone will reach out to you and want to share that. Uh, I have a couple a couple friends, Nick, Nick Wan, um, he, he worked as a data scientist for the Cincinnati Reds for a little bit. And he, one of the main ways that he got his job is that he wrote a blog. He had a really cool analysis that he did that ended up getting posted in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. And he was able to leverage that into a position. That's an incredible story to tell is that, hey, this is the work that I've done. Um, and if you say you're in the newspaper, you send the article, that's something that, that can turn heads pretty easily. So obviously that won't always happen. You're not gonna get picked up by a major news source, but at right. the same time, you can definitely increase your chances that you at least get recognized or noticed by putting that stuff out in the world. 